Hello everybody, I'm John Casey. Welcome to beautiful Carrara on the Gold Coast in Queensland for the 1998 CBA National Championship for Men. And what a contest we have coming your way. The Eastern Conference champions, the Frankston Blues, have made their way north to tackle the Northern Conference champions, the Cairns Marlins. And to tell us more about this grand final, I'm joined in commentary by the Australian national team coach, Barry Barnes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting contest. Uh, I think both teams have certainly earned the right to be there. Uh, excellent seasons and uh, you know I think uh, Frank's only dropped three games and uh, ten, and Cairns have only dropped one so uh, it certainly could be anyone's matchup uh, you know a number of players in both teams have had NBL experience so uh, yeah it could be a like I said a very exciting contest I'm certainly looking forward to the battle between Darren Lucas a former NBL defensive player of the year and George Butler from Cairns who averages 31 points per game Yes, well, Darren, we know Darren's ability. Uh, he picked up gays on many a times and shut down uh, or tried to shut down a very good player. So, you know, Butler will certainly know that he's got a player with him tonight. And Barry, who do you think might win? I think Frankston. I think Frankston's overall talent because uh, they've... Uh, their record has been that they share the ball very well and, and they don't rely on, on, a, on too few. And if Lucas can do a job on Butler, I think you know, Cairns will struggle. Bill Runchy, 10-year coach of Frankston. You've had a tremendous year, 30-3, and three, and the biggest loss this year was by four points. But I guess that doesn't count for a heck of a lot when you get to the grand final. No, I don't think so. I think uh, tonight you've got the best two teams in the nation and uh, very similar teams. They both play good man-to-man -man defense and, and the motion offense, and I think it'll be a great game. And the key to winning the match for you? I think uh, rebounding and pushing the ball up the floor, trying to control the tempo a little bit. Wish you the best of luck. Thanks, John. Rod's second consecutive grand final for the Cairns Marlins. This year, we're hoping for a championship. Well, most definitely. We're hoping for one last year, too, and didn't get it. But, you know, that's what you play all year long to, to get to this point. And, uh, you know, two excellent clubs and both teams over 30 uh, wins for the year. That's a pretty good effort and uh, should be a heck of a game, but you come down to win. So uh, that's what it's about. How are you going to go about winning the match? Well, I think just stick to what uh, got us here. Good, solid defense and... Uh, on selfishness on offense and and then when you get two good teams it boils down to who's going to work harder to execute than the other one so uh, execution and good defense we wish you the best of luck thank you all in readiness for the 1998 cba men's grand final and it is the frankston blues who come up with the opening possession working against the cans marlins shot from reese newsman wouldn't tumble Cairns will bring the ball back up the floor. Certainly Barry Barnes, national coach. Some great talent on show here. Yeah, some good athletes. It'll be, it'll be an excellent contest. Yes, I... Whistle provided by Michael Ayland. First foul of the match. It's been caught on Darren Lucas. You see him reaching in there against George Butler. And that duel could go a long way to deciding this match, Barry. But that's a great start. George Butler averages 31 points per game. Leads the team in three-point shooting, foul shooting, steals. There's not a lot he can't do. This man has been most impressive, Scotty Mitchell. And that, expect to see a lot of it in this match. This is Sneed, long way from the hoop. Troy Boundy gets it next. Needs support, Butler top of the key. Here comes Darren Lucas. Rob Pop, the coach of Cairns, are up. Wanting a foul called on Lucas. Butler, got past him pretty quickly, confronted by Snead. Plenty of contact, looked like an offensive foul, and that's the way Michael Allen has seen it. Butler charging all over the top. You'll see it here in replay. Stephen Stewart had position, according to the referees. Working against Agrams. Couldn't get away from him. No room for the shot. Now Reese Newsom. Now Stewart is open, steps inside Agrams from close range. Well, he tried to dish off to Scott Mitchell. It maybe wasn't the best option. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Someone's going to have to pull the trigger pretty quickly. This man is dangerous from all ranges. With one second left on the shot clock, the shot comes up from Darren Lucas. He was short on the iron, and Cairns are going to come up with possession. Back to Lay. 
Looking down on the low block, Darren Lucas. No room for him. He feeds Stewart. He finds his range pretty early. A three-point bomb from Stephen Stewart. Six to four. The lead to the Frankston Blues. Frankston in front for the first time. Here they come. Through the agency. Newsom. Lucas got in the air with his problems. Outside, John Lee released their leading three-point bomb specialist, and he come up with the money there. Now you see part of the big crowd that has built up here. Carrara on the Gold Coast. It's the Cairns Marlins preparing to join the National Basketball League. Some unfinished business here with the CBA Grand Final. And that's as good a move as you'll see anywhere. As Butler takes them on and with his right hand banks two off the window. Showing his skill here. Against all sorts of opposition. At the other end, John Lee drains another three-point ball. Two of three from beyond the perimeter. Duggan, quick outlet pass, Butler. To greet him, Darren Lucas. He pushes Lucas over, no whistle. Duggan firing for two. Couldn't get it to go. The ball's loose. Butler read it better than anyone and then drew a foul on Reese Newsom. Should be Newsom's first foul. Butler can make things happen. He was about third in line for the loose ball. Just read it better than anyone. Good acceleration. Wins possession, draws a foul, now he goes to the strike. And at 81%, leading this team, you don't want to be putting him there too often. What a tremendous year he has had. 31.6 rebounds on a regular season. Still operating at above 25 points per game here in the finals. This time can't get it to go. Good rebound with authority from Scott Mitchell. Releases Newsom. See the time remaining here in the opening quarter. Bottom right of your screen. At the moment, Newsom has it. His team leads by five. He wants to make it eight and has. He's drained it. Oh, Milo. Reese Newsom. The shot is after the buzzer from Timmy Duggan. That won't count, but what a way for the Frankston Blues to put the finishing touches on here at quarter time. Reese Newsom from long range buries the three, and at the first break, Frankston have an eight point lead. It's 29 to 21. Well, the Frankston Blues had eight scorers in the opening quarter, led by John Leahy with eight points. George Butler on your screen, top scores with ten, but the Cairns Marlins find themselves eight points in arrears as quarter number two of the 1998 CBA Grand Final Series gets underway. And Cairns come up with the opening possession. Timmy Duggan goes to Butler, sneak, picks himself off the floor. And resumes his battle with Scott Mitchell. Two of the heavyweights going at it. Outside Aaron Grabau, his shot wouldn't tumble. And this is Chris McKinnon reeling the ball in and handing off to Reese Newsom. Quickly up the floor. Back to McKinnon. Top of the key. Mitchell moves the ball onwards. Newsom. Being shadowed by Timmy Duggan at the moment. This is McKinnon. Trying to get a little closer to the hoop against Boundy. He played some pretty tough D. And it's an offensive foul. What a defensive stop on that occasion from Aaron Fear, in fact. Aaron Fern it is. Yeah, good call. A good, good on a good, good defensive effort. Sneed having an excellent wrestle with Mitchell. Butler fires away. Newsom the rebound. Outlet pass for John Lay. Frankston want to play this up tempo. Lucas in the open court. Banks two off the window. Well, that lead is now into double figures. And Cairns need to find someone with a hot hand at the moment. Now, Stewart backing his way in close to the hoop against Fern. Banks two off the window, and Stephen Stewart is making an impact here in term number two. He now has nine points, six of which have come in this second quarter. Aaron Fern hands off to Timmy Duggan. 
Down low, this is Snead in traffic. Yes, use his size and strength there. Stewart believed he was fouled. Michael Aylan, the referee, was right on top of the situation. No whistle forthcoming. Here it is in replay. Snead just hustling his way to the hoop. Had three to beat and came up with the goods. Hands would like to score here, get this down to single figures, and Troy Bound is the man to do it. It's now a nine-point lead for Frankston, and the crowd getting involved as well. This is a tremendous move from Troy Boundy. Now Frankston, can they answer? Darren Lucas, a painted a backdoor move, an excellent assist from Stephen Blackley. There's Butler, isolated against the much bigger McKinnon, takes them on, again he's on the floor, receiving plenty of treatment. As Fern works a little closer, shut down quickly on that occasion though by Scott Mitchell. He keeps going, persistence pays off for the Marlins. They're back to within four. Well, Frankston, need a steadier. Chris McKinnon couldn't provide it, Darren Lucas can. Oh, what a tremendous battle we have going here. Three minutes out from half time. Six point lead for Frankston, the Eastern Conference champions. Cairns Marlins preparing for their NBL debut, and George Butler slices his way to the hoop and comes up with another two. 14 points now for him. He joins Snead, his teammate, as the game high scorer. And after trailing by as much as 12 here in turn number two, the Marlins have stormed back into contention. Lay. Wants to take Boundy on, overshot the ball. Sneed came up with it again. And now Timmy Duggan will bring the Cairns Marlins forward. Things starting to happen for them. And Duggan draws a foul on Stephen Blackley. Fourth team foul on Frankston here in turn number two. And an obvious one at that. And it's now a five point buffer in charge in favour of Frankston. Duggan goes to Snead. As Fern works the ball to Troy Boundy. Snead got a good seal on that occasion on Mitchell. Confronted by McKinnon, couldn't get the shot to tumble. They wrestled for the rebound, and Darren Lucas, he's a fairly fierce competitor. Cairns Marlins fans don't like the call, but Troy Boundy has been called for the foul. There he is, number 11. So, eight points, the margin in favour of Frankston. They have possession, and they'll slow this down for the last shot of the first half. Don't have a lot of time. Newsom draws a foul on Tim Duggan. It was a soft foul. It's going to be Duggan's second. Second foul. Tim Lyon two will be And Reese Newsom is going to the stripe. Careless error there from Timmy, Timmy Duggan with six seconds remaining. Substitution Frankston, down. Stephen Stewart and John Both these teams average 106 points per game on the regular season. Certainly Cairns are going to be well down on that rate here at half time. They have 38 at the moment. Only 17 have come in turn number two. And they've got six seconds to get this ball to the other end of the floor and manufacture a shot. Here's Duggan, lightning quick. He pulls up for the jumper and buries it. Oh, what a play on the halftime buzzer from Jimmy Duggan. Maybe that will lift the Cairns Marlins. They close to within eight points in this entertaining first half from Carrara. And this is worth another look. Timmy Duggan, one way then the other, pulls up with the shot clock and game clock about to expire. And it's all nylon. So a tremendous first half here in the CBA Grand Final has the Frankston Blues out leading by eight points. It's 48 to Cairns 40. And welcome back to Carrara. There are the half-time statistics, and not a lot in them. The Frankston Blues lead by eight, but the field goal shooting percentages, as you can see, just one shot there. The rebound count, very close indeed. And four turnovers to just one from Frankston. I'm sure both coaches will be happy with that. So Frankston by eight as we commence the second half of the 1998 CBA Men's National Championship. Proudly sponsored by CTC Resources from Albury. Sneed wins the tip, not surprisingly. And Cairns get first use of the ball. And they'd really like to get off on the right foot. 
Timmy Duggan. Now Butler, quick hands, he goes to Boundy. He fires over the top of John Lay, and that's the start they were after. Boundy has been impressive. Now has six points in the match, and that is the difference between the two teams. This is Scott Mitchell. Pushes Sneed over, no whistle. Now it's back with Stephen Stewart. Puts the ball on the floor. Being harassed by Butler. Almost lost it. Surely that was double dribble. That's what the Cairns Marlins coaching staff was up for. They didn't get any joy from referee Scott Butler, however. Eight seconds on the shot clock here for the Frankston Blues. It's going to go up pretty quickly. Stewart couldn't get it to fit, however. It spills out of quarter. Frankston and Cairns. They edge their way just a little closer here. They trail by seven at quarter time, eight at the half. And they are now within six points of Frankston. Boundy. Lucas Agrams. And Duggan onto Butler. Top of the key, Boundy. Now Butler guarded by Lucas. Sneed wants it down low, working against the smaller Stephen Stewart. Trying to get a little closer to the hoop. Well, that was excellent stuff. Excellent oh, move yes. from Chris Sneed. He leads the game with 17 he points. Point he also has five rebounds as well. But just too big, too strong here for Stewart. And he split Scott Mitchell, who tried to come in on help D. And there is George Butler. At last count, that was the seventh time he'd been Paul Axton put on the floor. And there he was making a contest of it again. And somehow Stephen Stewart kept that alive for Leahy. He goes to Newsom. Lapavana couldn't get it to go. Excellent contest under the hoop for the rebound. And Cairns are up and running. Boundy has dug him to his right. He wants to penetrate, takes them on. He draws a foul on Frankston. He'll be going back to the stripe. Scott Mitchell picks up his third personal foul. Troy Boundy has impressed me, Barry. Yeah, well, this is the start I th I'm sure that the coach would be looking for. You know, Bounty, I thought, started a little bit like this, but missed his shots and then really went out of the game. But you now he's come back after halftime and he's, re he's really putting in and showing us the ability that this young man has. They've really struggled from the stripe, however. Six of 14. Makes the second. It's makes the second. Seven of 15. Yeah, if they'd made this. those other eight points, they'd have a, they would have a handy lead at the moment. Almost two minutes play. Term number three. Frankston in possession. Firing up the shot. Couldn't get it to go, Scotty Mitchell. Now Butler has it. Scored ten points in the opening quarter and only four since. Well, I'm sure he has some petrol left in the tank for later on. Ambitious pass. Duggan did well to keep it alive. And there's some intelligent play as well from Reese Newsom as he maintains possession for the Frankston Blues. Right in front of his teammates and the bench. Now he comes full. John Lay has been impressive as well. Lucas against Boundy. Penetrating. Lost the handle. Tried to work it back to Lay. Butler read the pass easily. Now he goes all the way, but he's been called for an offensive foul. Certainly. This is Stephen Stewart working against Agrams. Scotty Mitchell joining into Lucas. Now John Lay. Excellent pass. Newsom was left alone. Duggan gave him an inch. He took a mile. He drains it. Newsom. Back to a five-point lead for Frankston. This is Grabau working close to the hoop. Couldn't finish it off, however. And in traffic, Stephen Stewart has been called for a travelling violation. believe there may have been some contact from behind and here he's muscling his way against Agrams and he needs to be careful here. Doesn't want to pick up another cheap foul. There's two at the moment. As Duggan assesses the situation from the top of the key. Troy Boundy, double team. He releases the ball to Agrams, gets it back. Duggan's top of the key. The no-look passes to grab out. Down low, here's Sneed. Boundy. Penetrating, couldn't get it to go. It's loose. Reese Newsom read it well. Cut across a couple of Cairns players to pick up the scraps. Now Leahy, they're out to shut him down pretty quickly. But Lucas has found some room on the baseline. Enough room for the shot, yes, but he couldn't find the target. But Scott Mitchell can. There to clean it up. Good hustle from Lucas, created it. Mitchell puts the finishing touches on.
Good work under the hoop there from Scott Mitchell, 23-year-old. Over 100 games experience in the CBA. Agrams goes to work, lost the handle, spills out of court. Well, things just aren't happening for Cairns at the moment. And it won't be long before Rod Pop is sign signalling to the bench for a timeout, I believe. Stewart works inside Agrams, confronted by Boundy. The pass was a little off the mark. It spills out of court and timeout has been called by the Cairns Marlins. 7.51 left on the clock until three-quarter time. It's Frankston, 52, leading Cairns, 45. The season started back in March for these two teams. And here we are, the 1998 National Championship game. Cairns Marlins in possession through Chris Sneed. They trail by seven points at the moment. That was the margin at quarter time. It was eight at the half in favour of Frankston. And the crowd getting involved as well. Agrams from the foul line, left unattended, couldn't finish it off. Bad miss there for Cairns. McKinnon pulled down the rebound, hands off the Newsom, now gets it back. Lay, quick hand, Stephen Stewart, guarded by Sneed. Now Newsom, the right wing, back to Stewart. Trying to get inside Chris Sneed, unable to do so, he feeds Mitchell. Mitchell thought there was some contact on the shot, no whistle forthcoming, and Cairns come up with the rebound. Duggan, hands off, grab out. Now Sneed against the shorter opponent, getting close to the hoop. Here he goes again. Well, that could be an action replay. We've seen that. That's right. We've seen it all night. Chris Sneed now up to 19 points in the match. His team closes to within five, but they need to play some D here. McKinnon, travel. Good defensive pressure from Aaron Grabow. Forces a turnover. And Cairns can close to within a single basket. Duggan quickly up the floor, being harassed by Reese Newsom, the 54 for Frankston. Duggan, a very competent ball handler. Good hands award winner this year in the CBA. Here's Sneed, he travelled. His eyes lit up there where he saw a little bit of space and he just couldn't get the feeding gear quick enough. Frank's down at the ball, 52 to 47. Well, wow. any sort of opportunities that Cairns really needs to make the most of. Put some pressure on Frankston. The moment the Blues have a five-point buffer. Stewart works inside Grabau. Pass from McKinnon was between his legs. Newsom almost fell over as well. There must be a wet spot there on the floor. But Stephen Stewart finds his range. Big three-point bomb from him. That's three from three. So he's uh, he's looking good from out there. Give him an open look. He's going to knock it down. Here's Agrams. Hustling his way against Scott Mitchell. Needs support. Duggan provides it. Now back to Boundy. Penetrating. Ambitious pass. Cut out by Frankston. John Leahy. Cool head in a crisis. Hands off. This is McKinnon. In turn, Scott Mitchell. The open man, Reese Newsom. Fires for three. Hard on the iron. Couldn't get it to go. Troy Boundy comes up with a rebound. Well, five and a half minutes left here. Turn number three. Eight point difference in favour of Frankston. As Timmy Duggan goes to work. Grab out. George Butler sitting down for the moment. Won't be long before he's injected back into the Cairns lineup. Agrams couldn't get it to go. Sneed kept it alive. Duggan with an opportunity. Hit to the lap of honour. This time kept alive by Boundy. Ambitious. He's equal to the challenge. Oh, party trick from Troy Boundy. And the Cairns Marlins are back to within six. This is worth another look. In traffic against a taller opponent. Little English on the ball. Off the window. Another two for Troy Boundy. Oh, Stephen Stewart has the hot hand at the moment. However, he salutes the crowd as he nails another. Well, that'll break the heart of the Cairns Marlins right in front of their bench as well. As Duggan surveys the options. Grab out. Guarded by McKinnon. Goes to Boundy. He has Leahy to contend with. Four seconds on the shot clock. Boundy. Speculative. Couldn't get it to go. He now wrestles with Sneed for the ball. Cairns have a new 30-second shot clock. Agrams. Sneed wants it and gets it next. 
turns and faces Stephen Stewart. Now Boundy wants Duggan. Being patient in offense, looking for a percentage shot. The shot clock is now into single figures as Boundy goes to work on Leahy. Spins back to the baseline, overshot the ball. Rebound to McKinnon. Hands off to Newsom. Mitchell in support along with Leahy. Leahy gets it next, confronted by Boundy. He wants to get down to the baseline. He draws a foul on Troy Boundy. Actually, Boundy's doing a good job on Leahy. You know, Leahy got off before. He hasn't, he's not giving him any space to, to spot up and knock down those three-point shots. This Leahy had eight points in the opening term and hasn't added to that tally since. Now he inbounds the ball. Finds Stephen Blackley. Guarded by Aaron Fern. Boundy working against Leahy again. McKinnon guarded by Sneed. Firing over the top. Couldn't get it to fit. Boundy came up with a rebound. Now Duggan. The cans are getting the stops. They just can't put the points on at the other end. The moment their leading scorer, George Butler, sits down. Had 10 points in the opening term. Grab out. Tough shot, couldn't get it to go. Leahy in best position, came up with a rebound and then drew a foul. Grab out and Sneed in the vicinity. The foul, I believe, is on Grab out. What a substitution the cans. Defense of both teams on top here in turn number three. Blackley almost lost it. Frankston maintained it through Newsom. Guarded by Duggan. Here's Blackley again. Fronted by Higginson, who's just into the game. Oh, that was a bad pass. It was picked off easily by Snead. An equally bad pass there. The young man just stepped onto the court. Now it's a wrestle under the hoop for nine times out of ten. That man, Chris Snead's going to win any battle that close. Snead now with 21 points, a game high. Next best is Stephen Stewart from Frankston with 15. Less than two and a half minutes away from the final break. Reese Newsom wants a screen and getting one from McKinnon. Pick and roll, McKinnon to the hoop and comes up with a basket. And how many times have they learned that in training, Barry? Yes, it's a good play, good old play. Always keeps working. Good finish too. Showed athleticism and poise. Get around the defence. Now Sneed against Leahy this time. The 2.15s go at it. Opens up for Higginson. He wants to penetrate off the window. The two counts. And a blocking foul has been called on John Leahy as well. That's going to be his second personal. But this was an excellent move from Chris Higginson. First points in the match. When the coach throws you in, you, in there and wants something to happen, that's what he likes to see. Certainly the way they'll answer it. And stay out there a little bit longer now. George Butler still sitting on the Cairns bench, looking rather relaxed. I doubt whether he sat down this much all season. But for the moment, it's Chris Higginson. He ices the third. Back to a six-point ball game. It's the 21-year-old Chris Higginson comes up with some important points. Mitchell. Around the perimeter, McKinnon moves the ball to Stephen Blackley. Now Stephen Stewart has nailed a couple of big threes this term. Goes to Blackley, cuts inside Boundy, confronted by Higginson who worried him out of the points and then came up with a rebound. Oh, the coach will be most impressed with this as Higginson making an impact at both ends to the applause of his teammates. Six-point buffer, 80 seconds away from three-quarter time. Duggan with the ball. Lucas to contend with as the two number fours eyeball one another. Higginson gives it back to Duggan. Shot clock down to seven. Boundy. Guarded by McKinnon. Penetrates to the baseline. Too easy. Got to the hoop for another two. That's a four-point ball game. Well, this has been a tremendous comeback from the Marlins. They trail by as much as 12 in term number two. They're now back to within four. They've restricted Frankston to just 12 points in term number three. They're letting 16 themselves. McKinnon short on the iron. Boundy the rebound and he's fouled. Almost an unsportsmanlike foul. It's a fairly obvious one. Uh, that may have been a little harsh. McKinnon just trying to relieve him of possession. And Rod Pop and the Cairns Marlins are right back in the hunt.
Bill Runchy and the coaching staff of the Frankston Blues look on. They've seen a 12-point lead evaporate to just four. Cairns with possession. Shot clock some 13 seconds inside the game clock. Firing away from long range. Another nail from Aaron Fern. It's back to a single point the difference as Cairns storm back into contention. Looking for the final shot of term number three. This is Stephen Blackley. Goes to Mitchell. He penetrates Lucas down on the baseline. Couldn't get the off-balance shot to tumble. And that is all for term number three. And the Cairns fans are up. An eight-point halftime lead has been reduced to a one-point buffer at the last break. Frankston 60, lead Cairns 59. Three-quarter time here, and Cairns outscore Frankston 19-12 in term number three. Back to a one-point ball game. Cairns on top in the rebound count as well. This should be a tremendous final quarter for the 1998 CTC Resources National Championship. Northern Conference champions, the Cairns Marlins, who have lost just two games all year against the Eastern Conference champions, the Frankston Blues. And for the fourth and final time, Cairns win the ball from the tip. What a tremendous contest. Frankston out by as much as 12 in term number two. As Chris Sneed goes to work, unsuccessful with the first shot in term number four. Perhaps the best news for the Cairns Marlins is they are doing all this without their main scorer, George Butler, who has sat down most of term number three. Leahy penetrates for Frankston. Nice looking shot from him. His first score since the opening quarter. See what Cairns can manufacture. Duggan works to the baseline. Goes back to Chris Snead. Aaron Fern has been impressive. He goes to Duggan for three. Hard on the iron. Darren Lucas accepts the rebound. Newsom off and running. Scotty Mitchell joining in on the left. John Leahy to the right. It's Leahy who gets it. And now Mitchell saw some space. Wanted to penetrate. Goes outside to Newsom. Couldn't get it to go. Kept alive by Scotty Mitchell. And now Stephen Stewart, back to Lucas. Newsom, quick ball movement from Frankston. Stewart has nailed one from there already, not on this occasion. Aaron Fern came up with it eventually. Now hands off to Tim Duggan. The Marlins have just slowly and gradually eked their way back into this match, Barry Barnes. Right now it's up for grabs, and Higginson has had an impact as well. Sneed, tallest man on the floor, and drawing a foul. John Leahy protests. Not to any advantage, though. That's his third personal foul. Well, I think maybe he got the wrong man, actually. When you see it on replay, I thought Stewart came across the arm, but uh, that there was certainly a foul there, and he's, uh, he's now got to make it. Chris Sneed, as we've seen already in the match, at the moment one of seven from the charity strike. Yeah, that'll do him. Chris Sneed makes it first. This is the time to be making them. But I think the referees are having a look out for stepping over the line. Almost wheeling himself a little closer to the hoop, he finds the target. Chris Sneed, now with 23 points, nine rebounds. And it's Frankston by a single point. Two minutes played, final quarter action. John Leahy close to the hoop, came up empty. Stewart had it, then lost it. Now it's with Chris Knee. Well, this is the worm starting to turn. Apart from a brief moment in the first three minutes of the game, Frankston have led exclusively. The moment, Cairns have an opportunity today to change that. Sneed lost the handle in plenty of traffic. They worried him out of possession. Frankston come forward through Reese Newsom. Lucas quickly onto John Lee. Guarded by Boundy. Puts the ball on the floor. Trying to get the shot away. Couldn't find the target. They wrestle for the rebound. Scott Butler's in there pretty quickly. The referee. Heavy contact. Let's get a look at it in replay. 
his third battle with his side ball for Frankston. Rob Pop, the coach of the Marlins, trying to keep his players under control. Foul was on Tim Duggan. Point guard from Cairns. Lucas looks inside. Stewart had a good seal, couldn't finish it off, tries to keep it alive. Higginson's got it again. Pretty happy to relieve it like a hot potato as well to the safe hands of Timmy Duggan. Back to Boundy. Nine minutes left in the grand final of 1998. One point ball game. It does not get any better than this. Duggan almost lost the handle. Guarded by Newsom. Penetrates. Higginson. Shut down by Lucas. Shot clock down to five. Need, needing to be quick. Fern goes to Sneed. From close range, he lost the handle. Another foul. It's been called on the Frankston Blues. And Chris Sneed has proven a handful all match there down on the low block. Back in the day, Chris McKinnon sitting down. Stephen Stewart. And to the line for two shots. And for the first time, they get the lead for a long time. Chris Sneed. Tremendous numbers for Chris Sneed. He's starting to get the hang of these foul shots as well, Barry. He's getting the rhythm at last, but it's the time they want him to have the rhythm. You know, he can put his team in front if he makes this one. And he does so. Cairns in front for the first time since the opening quarter, and their fans are loving it. Well, who would have thought this? The gauntlet well and truly thrown now, down now to the Frankston Blues. John Leahy pulls the trigger. Wasn't a confident looking shot. And Sneed cleans up again. Rebound number 10 for the big man. Cairns growing in confidence. They were defeated by Rockhampton back in April by six points. And then lost by three points to the Gold Coast Warriors. But apart from that, Cairns undefeated this year. Duggan, yes, he drops it. Jimmy Duggan lands from three-point territory. And the Cairns Marlins have a four-point edge. Duggan averages 10 points per game. He has seven so far in this match. And what a ball game we have going here. Crowd are loving it. We need extra effort. Extra effort on the board. By the big guy. All right. Penetration by the guys on the outside. Penetrate. Get on the board. You can't go for only two minutes. Do it for two minutes. We'll get somebody else in the camp. You guys got to refocus here. Work on the goal. All right, let's go. Eight minutes left in the 1998 Grand Final. So far in term number four, Cairns have outscored Frankston 7-2. to two. And after trailing by as much as 12 in the second quarter, they lead it by four. Beaten Grand Finalists last year. Offensive foul has been caught on Scott Mitchell. Chris Mead making things happen for Cairns at both ends of the floor. Not too much science in that one from Scotty Mitchell, Barry. No, he's, he's fought too hard, unfortunately, young fellow. He did a nice move, but then he tried to take it all the way to the... He had it pulled up and made the jumper. Would have completed it. And if someone had said that Cairns were going to be in a winning position without George Butler playing almost the entire second half, you might have been laughed out of the stadium. Offensive but that's what's happening. Offensive foul now called on the Cairns Marlins, and Chris Sneed... Picks up second his second down. personal. For McKinnon restarts for Frankston. And Reese Newsom leads the charge. 7.30 left on the clock. Good seal down low. Here's Lucas. Overshot the ball from close range. Will he be very disappointed with that? Should have done better. Yes. Now it's time for Frankston to play some defence. There's a the man again. Sneed spinning to the hoop, the finger roll. He can do it all. 27 points, 10 rebounds now for Chris Sneed. Leaders out to six, and Frankston need a score. Can McKinnon provide it off the window? He does. Chris McKinnon, two points. Frankston, here they come again. 
Well, this has been a tremendous battle. Two best teams in the seven conferences spread over six states have found their way to the championship decider. With six and a half minutes to go, it's still up for grabs. Duggan! Well, has he come to play here in the final term? Now into double figures, and the lead is out to seven. Well, Frankson have been shut down here completely by the Marlins. They've scored only four points in six minutes of the final term. McKinnon, short on the iron. Duggan comes up with a rebound. Now Higginson's in there. Chris Snead has it. And for the moment, Cairns are looking like winners. They're yeah, certainly showing a lot more poise, a lot more composure, and as you said, Duggan has certainly looked, taking some nice shots and made them. Chris Higginson. Works the ball to Aaron Fern. Spinning on McKinnon, getting closer to the hoop, lost the handle. Good defensive pressure from Frankston, but it goes unrewarded. The ball spills out of court off the Blues. Cairns maintain possession. Three seconds on the shot clock. This is going to have to go up in a pretty big hurry. Higginson couldn't get it to go. They wrestle for the rebound. It's loose. It spills to Reese Newsom. Off and running. Leahy to his left. Gets it next. Looking to penetrate on boundary. Spins to the left-hand side from close range. He came up empty. Frankston could get another opportunity, though. It spills to Duggan. Kept alive by Newsom, and Duggan goes in for an easy two. It's a nine-point lead to the Cairns Marlins. What a turnaround. Well, the wheels have certainly come off the Frankston Blues here. First seven minutes of the final quarter, they've scored only four points. Given up 14 to the Marlins. Lucas tries an off-balance shot, it wouldn't go. Another rebound, dragged down by Aaron Fern. And what a brave coaching performance this has been from Rod Pop from Cairns as well to keep his gun players sitting on the bench for most of the second half. Yeah, young Higginson's come in now and given him something and prepared to use the ball, move the ball. He's done a very good job. Aaron Fern lost the handle. McKinnon said, I'll have it. Hands off to Leahy. He's lost it as well. Duggan stripped him of it. Coast to coast, Timmy Duggan. Well, what a final quarter this young man is having. Ten points in the final term for Timmy Duggan. And all of a sudden, cans have exploded. They lead it by 11 points after trailing by as much as 12 in the second term. Almost lost the handle, Timmy Duggan. But cans are looking the goods. points to four so far in the final term and the Cairns Marlins have turned this around. They'll join the National Basketball League in 12 months time. This has been a great way to finish but they're not done with yet. Frankston as John Lay hits another three-point bomb. 13 points now in the match for Leahy. And the Stewart with 15 has more for Frankston. It's back to an eight-point split. There you see the time remaining. Duggan, milking the clock. Butler has checked back into the game. He'd be pretty keen to get a shot away, I'd expect, as well. And maybe that wasn't what Cairns needed. He's down, clutching his stomach. There was heavy contact. Frankston thought it was a charging foul. Referees didn't see it that way. Here it is in replay. And after spending all that time on the bench, George Butler checks back in and is now sitting down on the floor. Well, actually, he's in quite a deal of pain. It looked like a knee accidentally may have winded him. Yeah, I thought he was very lucky. Um, we've seen a, <laughs> a lot of moves called charge before. I thought he was very lucky to get out of that. But unfortunately, he uh, looks like he might have hurt himself in the process. 
Just reminding everyone, everyone, after the game, after the celebration for the winning team, we'll be right here for the women's ceremony. That'll be after the game, right here, centre court. So stick around for that. Also, after the ceremony, outside, we've got big things happening outside. We've got the band playing outside. While we go off, we have drinks outside in the bar. George Butler makes his way to the bench. He cannot continue for the moment. And in normal circumstances, you would figure that maybe Cairns hopes go to the bench with him. But not on this occasion. They found a way to put on a winning score or certainly a competitive score at this stage with still almost four minutes remaining. With Butler restricted to just 14, his season average is 31. Doesn't look good at all, but I'm sure if his team can hold on here, he won't be feeling too bad at all tonight. No, the pain won't be so bad. So the Frankston Blues come forward. Lit at the first three breaks. Three and a half minutes left, they trail by eight. Lucas gets the ball back to Stephen Stewart. Steps outside the perimeter, waits for Fern to disappear, then gets the shot away but couldn't find the target. Duggan. Comes up with a loose ball and gets it back from Chris Higginson. Aaron Fern, guarded by McKinnon. Gans, as you might expect, in no hurry to get a shot away here. Higginson uses Boundy. He pulls the trigger with seven seconds left on the shot clock. It's all nylon. Troy Boundy now has 13 points in the match. And it's a 10-point split on the back of this shot. Other end, the ball spills out of court. Frankston maintain possession. There's George Butler still receiving some treatment on the bench after being winded, we believe, or maybe a little more serious than that. This is Newsom. Couldn't find the target bound. He comes up with a rebound. Well, certainly outside shooting of the Frankston Blues has gone ice cold here in the final quarter. They've managed only seven points. We have two and a half minutes remaining, and Bill Runchy looking a little bemused on the bench at the moment, as you might expect. 18 points to seven. Cairns have outscored Frankston in the final term. Yeah, it's interesting. Lay, who started the game off so well, is, uh, is to me, it looked like he's been reluctant to get involved. You know, um, he's not moving to get open. Penetrating hard to the hook. Aaron Fern has had an impact on this game as well. Coming off the bench. Fern now has seven points. This is Stephen Stewart, who's worked manfully for the Frankston Blues, and so has bound him for Cairns. Crosses over halfway. Will he take them all on? Why not? Jass couldn't finish it off. Gets his own rebound. Now he's lost it. And it's going to be a Frankston ball. Well, as you can see, the Cairns Marlins players are a little surprised by that. But when you're 12 in front with two minutes to go, it's best just to play to the whistle. There it is in replay. And at the other end, whistle provided by Michael Aylin. It's called the Aaron Fern, his best. Aaron Fern picks up his first personal for the Marlins. Reese Newsom will restart proceedings, does so. Scott Mitchell, influential early, but like some of his teammates, not so toward the end of the game. Here's the clock. And foul is now being called on Frankston. There's George Butler. In fact, Aaron Grabout had trouble separating those two for most of the match. It must be the haircut. <laughs> There's George Butler. What a turnaround this has been from the Cairns Marlins. That familiar foul shooting style of Chris Snead. He could probably make them with his eyes closed at the moment after being one of his first seven foul shots. It would appear, according to our statistics, he's made five of his next six, made that six of his next seven. He's done well. 
Minute 40 left on the clock. 14 point lead as Frankston really struggled here in the final term in Cairns. Through Timmy Duggan, come forward again. Foul has been called on Chris McKinnon. It's going to be foul number four on McKinnon. Just reaching in there, trying to impede the progress of Timmy Duggan. Look at the Cairns fans. Midway through the second quarter with their team down by 12, they wouldn't have been too confident. George Butler goes in for an early shower. This is the young man that's really sparked it on in this last quarter. Looks he had 11 points in this last quarter. And a storming finish from the Cairns Marlins is going to get them home here in the National Championship. Scotty Mitchell drains three for Frankston. 13 points separates these teams at the moment. The Frankston Blues, though, are in a situation where they need to foul and try and stop the clock. It's all they have left open for them at the moment. Unfortunately, though, they are in foul trouble here in the final quarter. And the Cairns faithful are up and singing. What a match Chris Snead has had. 11 of 16 from the field. 29 points, a dozen rebounds. And really kept Cairns in the match when they couldn't find any other way to score down in the low post. He was always available. Stephen Stewart muscling his way close to the hoop. Called for the offensive foul against the youngster Chris Higginson. Higginson back in it again. This time the foul will be on Reese Newsom. Rod Pop, the coach of the Cairns Marlins. They made the grand final in 94 and again last year. Neither time successful. But there will be smiles all round in 1998. Chris Higginson. It's Chris Higginson who averages two points per game. So far in this match, he's doubled that. Firing away from the same spot was Scott Mitchell. Couldn't get it to go. Pulls the trigger again. Still no reply. Now Stephen Stewart from close range. They'll give him two. 12-point buffer. Quick foul would be the order of the day. And Chris McKinnon obliges. Higginson goes to the strike. Icing on the cake for him. And he, along with Tim Duggan, have made things happen in the backcourt for Cairns here in the final quarter. Frankston, come forward. Stewart, working against Aaron Fern. Chris Sneed had an errant hand in there as well. Whistle provided by Michael Aylin. Rod Pop can't manage a smile at the moment. He still has some work to be done. 40 seconds remaining in the grand final. Frankston restart. Newsom. Back to John Leahy. Three-point attempt under pressure was no good. And now Duggan gets past McKinnon. Confronted by Newsom. Whistle provided by Scott Butler. Less than 30 seconds remain here. And with Duggan going as a strike, 14 point lead. This may be the last time we see Frankston fouling. Yeah, it's if you can come up with the goods at the other end, but offensively, they've, they've really, it's all dried up. And uh, maybe I would have called the horses off before this. Twenty-seven points to twelve so far in the final term. Cairns Marlins have stormed home. Newsom helps himself to two more for the Frankston Blues. The Duggan up and running, coast to coast. He bangs two off the window. What a final quarter this man has had! 
Had four points at three-quarter time. He now has 18. Only Sneed with 29 has more for the Marlins. And they'll be happy to see the time tick away. The Cairns Marlins have won their first national championship with a come-from-behind victory over the Frankston Blues. They win it 88-74. What a triumph. The Cairns Marlins have come from nowhere after trailing by as much as 12 points in the second quarter. They get home full of running, outscoring Frankston 29-14 in the final quarter to give us a full-time equation. Cairns, 88, Frankston, 74. you came from uh, down south last year to up north for a championship ring you've got it how do you feel uh i feel it's a great feeling uh, we deserve it we didn't apologize for being here because we've been working hard since january 10th at this i mean this is just a product of what happens when you work hard i said from day one all i came to do is work i guess i work ring bound baby ring bound so rod pop championship winning coach of the cans marlins accepts the trophy from Adrian Davidson, the president of the CBA, and Bill Forge, the general manager of CTC Resources, will hand over the plaque as well and a check. And the Cairns Marlins, very happy after failing in two previous grand finals. 1998 is their year. A fantastic come from behind victory to defeat the Frankston Blues by 14 points. In the final analysis, it was Cairns 88. Frankston 74 and the Marlins are champions in the CBA for 1998.